We're almost done with row four, so let's finish up those last couple of blocks. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are finishing up the last row. We have a little bit more to do, but we're really close. So let's talk about the no rain, no flowers block. So this is block 29, I believe, for us. And there's a couple of things on this one. So there has been some talk about um, the wording on the flowers. So somebody mentioned that they didn't like that the F looked like a B. And, <laughs> you know, I thought it was totally fine. But then when somebody mentions something, you can't really unsee it, right? So I haven't decided for sure, but I may change out the wording on um, part of this block. And if I do, I will add some information on how I'm going to do that. Totally optional. The, the block is fine the way it is. But you know, it's funny how that happens. So I, ha I was on a really, really long bike ride with a friend one time and he said, um, I hate these really long stretches. They're exhausting. And ever since then, when I'm on a really long stretch of road, I think of that and I think, oh gosh, this is going to be exhausting. <laughs> so that's what happens, you know, when we hear something like that, then it sticks with us. So totally optional. So that's one thing. The other thing is I am pretty sure that I'm going to change out that gray. So there's um, a dark gray uh, detail around each of the flowers, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to change that out, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. All right, so let's go ahead and go over what we're going to need for this block. So there's a lot of little pieces and then one bigger one. So on our main fabric, it is that creamy, silky solid, plain, no, no design on it, just a creamy, um, silky solid. And we're going to start with this at eight and a half by eight and a half, eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric and make sure to back it with feasible stabilizer. And when you do that, make sure that you know which side, because <laughs> it really looks the same once from the front and the back once you've got that stabilizer on there. So main fabric, um, eight and a half by eight and a half. And then we have all these little flower pieces, lots of them. So, all right, and then for our applique pieces. So we have, um, the first one is the coral color of silky solid. And the, all of these are going to be two by two. So two by two for the first one, it is the coral. And I did back all of these with fusible stabilizer. So two by two, this is flower one. And then flower two is the olive green silky solid again in two by two. And then three and five are both the light blue, minty light blue, maybe just light blue, um, in two by two, silky solid, that's three and five. And then four and six are the gold silky solid. There's no design on these, it's just the silky solid. Um, in two by two, this is for numbers four and six of the flowers. And then for the bird, we have that really pretty pink star fabric. And this one, we are going to start with it at three by two and a half. I did back it with fusible stabilizer. That's for the bird. And then for the bird's wing, it is another piece of that coral silky solid. And I did back it with fusible stabilizer and that's at two by two, just like the flower sizes. All right. And then um, so like I said, I may change the wording. I haven't decided for sure. Um, and uh, we also need batting because we are going to quilt this. So on our batting, um, we're going to start with our batting at seven by seven. So that means that our final cut size is going to be six and a half by six and a half. So our batting is at seven by seven. And for our quilting today, um, I'm going to use Weather One. It's the rain. It is an orange design. So if you are using a five by seven hoop, then you would want to use a blue design. You would not want to choose this one because when you're double hooping, the traveling lines will go over the uh, original design. So you'll have two different uh, quilting designs and you would want one in four by six and one in two by six. And like I said, you would want a blue design for that. That's for those using a five by seven hoop. So for everyone else, we are going to use a six by six quilting design. And like I said, I'm using weather one. It is the rain. I'll probably use a metallic thread. I think that would look really pretty. So weather one in six by six in vertical. 
All right. And then, so the other thing that I wanted to mention is when you do all of those cute little flowers, all the little applique flowers, the detail stitch on the top is supposed to be this dark gray. And that's pretty and you can definitely do that. Or I think what I'm going to do is I am probably going to just watch the machine, babysit the machine. And as it's going to do each flower, I will very likely change my thread to something a little bit darker than the original color. So like a darker coral and a darker green and a darker blue. I think that that would be really cute. And that's totally optional. You can do the shadow gray on all of them. You can do the color that is in our thread kit that matches this. That would be super cute too or you can do something a little bit darker. Maybe I will do the one that's just the same, then we can keep with our thread kit. I don't know. So anyway, I'll decide once I get there and I will share that information. Um, so top stitching on the flowers, I will very likely watch it and stop it. And then um, if I decide to change out the wording, probably either way, I will do that just because I know a lot of people want to change the wording. and. Um, I think the no rain part is fine, but on the no flowers, maybe even just the word flowers, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll show you how to do that if that's something that you want to do, if you want to change out the wording. Um, but anyway, that's it. We're all good. Um, and then we will go over the final cut size. There's no special instructions on this one other than the changes that you may want to make. Hey everyone, so yesterday I did a um, last minute video on how to do a couple of things and unfortunately I forgot to hit the record button and so I need to do it again. So um, I'm going to just show you a couple of things, a couple of options. So the next couple of blocks are all about options. So the we're going to start with the no rain, no flowers block and then we're going to go into the one border block. Um, and just give you a couple of options and how to do that. So starting with the no rain, no flowers block, this block is great just as it is, but you saw that there were a few people that were talking about the fact that this F here looks like a B to them. And so once you see it, you really can't unsee it and it's totally up to you. Like I said, the block is fine as it is, but if you wanted to change the font, that's easy to do. We can do that. So let me just show you how. So to start with, you would need to look through your fonts. I keep mine on a Word spreadsheet and um, it just has the picture of the font and then the picture of the alpha so that I can see all the letters. So when I went through looking at them, I found this Evelyn font. It's by Drop Dead Threads and I think it was like $3 on their website. And um, you can see, let me move it over here. So you can see we're looking for a W with a little scroll up here at the top and an R with a scroll up at the top. And keep in mind, you could use any font that you want. You do not have to match up this font at all. You can do absolutely anything, especially if you take out the whole word. If you take out the whole word flowers, you can use anything you want. Um, if you're going to just replace the F, you could do that too. That would be super easy. Again, options, right? So this Evelyn font, you can see that the W has the nice little curve up here. Um, same with the R, if I recall. Yep, the R has a little font. It's not as much, this little curl up here. It's not as much, but it is some. The S is very different, but it's a pretty S. Um, I didn't find one with this S that has the other letters the same as well. So the Evelyn font by Drop Dead Threads is a nice option. Another one is... Um, what was it called? Ballerina Script. And it was by Itch to Stitch, but um, if you didn't know, Itch to Stitch was recently purchased by Designs by Juju, and they are currently loading all of the fonts and designs to the Designs by Juju site, but they're not all up yet. I did send them a message and ask if you could please add the Ballerina Script font. I don't know if they'll be able to or not, but this is the one I am going to use if I decide to change the word flowers. Um, so you can see over here 
that the F is nice. It's a very similar F, but it's closed. So the issue that I think people have is this open part makes it look like a B. So this F is a good F. Uh, the W was nice. It's got a little curve up there, not, not as big, but a little bit. Um, and the R, um, same thing, a little bit of an up part. You can see it better here. Um, and then the S is similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it using this font. And like I said, you can use any font. I don't know if you'll be able to get this ballerina script font, but Evelyn font is a nice option and anyone would work just fine or the one that's there is great. So look through your fonts and see what you like and see what you think would look well. I'm going to go ahead and do it with this ballerina script font. So I would just click on this letter A here, which creates the letters. And then you click on the text down here and type what you want it to say and then hit return. All right. And it'll automatically open, I think, to your last font. I'm not sure about that. I don't really remember. It might just be one that's already native to Embrilliance because Embrilliance Essential comes with several fonts for free, part of the program for you. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go to Ballerina Script. I think I used 1.25. Um, let's go ahead and try that. It's not really going to matter too much at this point. So there's the word. So since it's a script font, you can see that it's not all grouped together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make some minor changes to it and that's easy to do. So if I were to click on this little green of the L, then there's other options that come up and you can see this lower one. If I click on that, it will move everything that's after that L. So it'll bring it all together. So the other thing that you could do is you can line this up. Hmm, I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and click elsewhere and then click on the word and I'm just going to bring it up to this grid here so that I can have them somewhat in line. But notice that theirs is not in line at all. The E is way up here. The R comes down low. The L comes down a little bit. The O is pretty high. So it's pretty all over. So we can make it similar. We can make it different. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep working on that. So with this um, O, I click on the middle and then that lower one will bring it over. And really it's just because um, a script font, I want it to look like they're all connected. And that's just my choice. You can do it however you want. I'm going to bring this up a little since you can see that their O is up. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. We'll just see how we like it. All right. And then the D, click on that middle part and then it brings those other options. And I'm just going to move it over and down a little bit. And just keep going through these. Their E is pretty high. I don't think I can get my E quite that high. Um, it will depend on how it's connected. So let's just see. So it's high up here. Go ahead and give that a try. All right, and then the R, click on the middle one and that lower one will bring the S along with it. And I'm gonna bring it down pretty good. All right. And then the last one is the S. So I can click on that middle one and I am just going to line it up with the R. All right. So then you want to click, I always click elsewhere just so I can see it. And then I'm going to click on the stitching. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up down here. So you can see that with this font, it's bigger. So their S ends over here and our word continues across. So all I'm going to do is click on one of these. And so also I forgot, you can hit the shift button and click one of these and it will um, make it smaller from the center. So it doesn't matter either way, but that's something that you can do as well. So this is pretty close now here. I just made it smaller by bringing in one of the corners. Um, and that made it smaller and it's pretty, pretty good. I like that. All right. So then what I would do, I'm going to move it out of the way just so I can see it. Um, so if we want to go with that flowers, then we need to get rid of this flowers. And to do that, we would use the stitch simulator. So up here, there's this needle and it says stitch simulator. If we click on that, we can see that it is going to be this teal. The teal here is the wording. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way over to the wording. And then I'm just going to keep running through until it gets to the flowers. All right. And when it gets close, 
You can see I'm just moving it backward and forward to whatever will work. And when it gets close, I'm going to use the, the single stitch buttons here. So you can see I'm a little bit further over. And so I want to get all the way to the beginning of the word flowers. All right, so one forward. All right, and that's where it is. So then what I would do is I hit the stop button and that gives me an option to change the color. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to nickel and say, okay. So what that does is it changes all the future wording, which is just the word flowers in this case. So that worked out really well. So then we would go ahead, I think you can just click on flowers. No, it's all connected. Yeah, so instead what we'll do is we'll just look through here and there's our word flowers. All right, so you would just click through all of the steps and then when you get to the one that you want to delete, you just click delete on your keyboard and it's gone. And then, you know what, let's say undo. Before I do that, I'm gonna bring this one down just so that I line it up similar to where the first one is. All right, so now I'm going to click on this plus sign that will show me all those steps again. I'm gonna scroll down to where I know the word flowers is and I'm just gonna hit the delete button on my keyboard and now it's gone and I have a whole new word of flowers. Again, that is just an option. It's, it's cute, it looks great, it looks great the other way too. Either way, it's an option to learn more about our software, right? To experience our software some more. All right, so the other thing that people were saying is they don't like the gray inside of these flowers. So you could easily, if you could keep this as is or you could easily just babysit your machine and when it gets to a certain flower, you would hit stop and change your thread color if that's what you choose to do. Or since we're enjoying learning software, we can see how it's doing this. So I think we're still on Stitch Simulator. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, we weren't. So now it's on Stitch Simulator, sorry, my mistake. All right, so we know that it's the gray. So all of this gray part should be those flowers. So let's go ahead and forward over to that. Yep, so see, there's all of the centers of the flowers. So they're all gray. So what I would do to be able to uh, practice on our software a little bit more, I would go ahead and, um, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it when I get to the next flower and then use that single step to go back There we go. All right, so then go advance one forward and hit that stop button and we can change the color. And you can choose the colors that you want at this point or you can just use whatever is close by to save on time. And you can see that then all of them change to that dark blue that I chose. So I would run the stitch simulator again until I get to the next flower. So I've got that the first two done and then I'm going to hit the single stitch to see when I get to oops, too far one ahead. So you can see as soon as that little crosshair gets to this flower, that's when I want to hit stop and change the color. And you want to make sure to not use the same colors you already did. So we used federal. So I'm going to go ahead and choose blueberry just because it's close by. An easier way actually would be to change to a color that's completely different, but um, just so that you can see it and know where you are, but it doesn't really matter. Actually, you know what, let's see. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and forward through. We know that we did the first two and there's the third one. And then single stitches until we get to that third flower. And while I'm doing this, so we talked about this yesterday on the video that unfortunately I didn't record. Sorry about that. That It was a fun video too. It was really fun with all the people. So that was a big mistake on my part. So um, let's see, we did blueberry. So I'm going to go ahead and check denim and say OK. And all this is doing is it's giving it a stop so that we can change the thread color. And like I said, you can do it on your machine or you can utilize your software here. And an easier way to see it would be to change the colors to something that's really going to be noticeable. But actually, we can do that later. Since I didn't do it from the start, I'll show you how to do it after. All right, so we're just getting to that fourth flower at this point. 
There we go, and hit stop and change the color. I don't think we've done bright blue, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose bright blue and say okay. All right, so let me show you here. So shadow is the first one. The next one was federal. I'm gonna go ahead and just change the color here so that you can see options and how to do that. So all I'm doing is I'm clicking on it, click on the color, and then choose a different color. So I'm gonna choose cool gray. And the purpose of this isn't to do a color sort or anything like that. So you don't really have to worry about what colors they are because we're not gonna do a color sort. Um, the purpose is just to be able to get a stop so that we can change the thread if you choose to do each of these flowers with individual colors. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So the next one, like I said, after you do um, after you do that stop, it changes all of them. So you can see up here, they're all now bright blue. So I would just go ahead and do the color sort. I'm going to click elsewhere and then go to that bright blue. And that helps me to be able to see where I am too, so that I don't have to um, be quite as staring at it, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm just backing up. Oh wait, this is bright blue and we haven't done bright blue yet. My mistake, sorry. So we're gonna go ahead to the next one because this one will keep us bright blue and we'll go to the next flower, which is down here. All right, one. All right, and then I'm going to just choose a um, stop. Sorry, I'm gonna hit stop and choose a color. Ooh, we can choose a fun color, say okay. All right, and then you can see the next two are purple, so I'm just gonna move that over until I start seeing the last flower right there. And I can go forward until it gets to that last flower. I went further than I thought, I guess, sorry. All right, forward one, and then I'm gonna hit stop and choose, um, a, let's see, grape. Doesn't matter what color, like I said. All right, so then I have all these stops. So you can click on them and you can see that it is going to stop and give you an option to be able to change the color. All right, so um, once you have that, make sure to do a file save as, always save as when you do a lot of changes like that. Um, since you, if you change the wording on your flower and you think you might not be sure about that, you could, you would want to do a working file also. So you would do both stitching and working because when there's words involved, it's easier to make changes um, when you have a working file than when you have a stitch file. So that would be my recommendation if you think you're going to make changes. I like it the way it is. So I'm going to just do a save stitch file as, and I'm going to say no rain, no flowers, and then I'm just going to say ADJ for adjusted so that I know that that's the, the one I created. All right, so we talked about yesterday um, some options, and I wanted to point out, so like on these flowers, you can see the pink and the gold and the olive and the mint and mint and gold. So each of those have these different fabrics on there. And you could, using your thread kit, you could have your inner color, the inner detail match your fabric if you wanted to. You could keep it the gray that it originally was, but some people were saying that it they didn't really care for that. So you have an option of doing um, the same color as your fabric because we've got this awesome thread kit from uh, Daylily Fabric, our sponsor. So we could use the same threads or you could pick a thread that is darker and within the same color tone. That one is pretty much the same actually. But you get my point is that you could choose a different thread color that's within the same color scheme, but it um, will stand out a little bit. You could do that from your own thread stash, or the girls in the video yesterday came up with a really fun idea, and I think I'm going to do that. I really like their idea that they had. So you could pick colors that will go 
from your thread stash within the same flower grouping, you could mix and match them. I think that that would be really cute. So like whatever, you know, green with the gold. Oh, I already did the mint with it, but it doesn't matter. You get my point. Um, so pink with mint. I think that would be a really fun way to get them to stand out. And again, this is your quilt, your way. You can do the gray that is on there. You can do something a little bit different. You have options, right? So um, I like this one. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Actually, I already did. And I think I'm going to go with that, the different colors of our thread kit for that. I think that would be really cute. All right. So that's one thing. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the border block. So we have one filler block or border block at just one, and it is four by two, if I recall correctly. And it is on teal fabric, so that's something to consider too. You could always change the fabric if you choose, but it is on teal fabric, and it's just one simple block with a quilting design on it. So you can see from my notes, I thought it would be really fun to use that as our label block. I wanted to add a name and date to that block. Well, then Kimberbell came out with this really cute uh, label for spring showers. It's on their website um, in the digital downloads, I believe, and it's a spring showers label. And that's really cute. I'm quite sure I'm going to do that on the back of my quilt. So on the front of the quilt, you have options. You could add your name and date to that. You could add a cute little decorative design. That would be really fun. And we talked about some options. So um, you, some people were saying that they didn't, they were surprised that there wasn't a rainbow on this quilt anywhere. You could add a rainbow and I found one. So if you're interested in adding a rainbow, I did find one. So right here, this one, I bought it just to check the sizing. And the four inch is four by two. It's actually like three and 15 sixteenths by one and 15 sixteenths. So it's exactly the right size that we would need for this block, amazingly. So it was hard to find a rainbow, I'll tell you, because most of them are wider, right? They, they come up higher. So finding one that is more flat, this was a pretty lucky find. So this is on Etsy. I found it on Etsy. It's called Half Moon Embroidery. It's $1.50 for this cute little rainbow. That is a really fun option and it would fill that block really well. If you decide to add the rainbow, one thing that you could consider if you wanted is you could switch the location of, oops, sorry, it's hard to see where I'm pointing. So there's this log cabin block and then there's the filler block. So you could just switch those so that your rainbow is up high. You could leave it as is, totally up to you, whatever, if you decide to do a rainbow block. Another idea, and I think I'm leaning toward this one, even though I bought this cute rainbow <laughs> and it's really cute, I really like it. But I had this other idea and I thought that this was really fun. So on Designs by Juju, they have this design, it's called Spring Flowers Word Art and it's a bundle. You get two, four, six designs for $6 or if you do their um, six sets for $12, 10 sets for $15. If you spend $25 in one order, you get a whole bunch of designs for free. They always every month have these really cool promos. So I like this one. A kind word is like a spring day. I liked it enough that I showed you guys last night. I made a cute little sweater and I wore it two days in a row just because I forgot to hit the record button. So I'm showing you again. So a kind word is like a spring day. So this would be a really easy one and another way to try out our software. So if we go to Embrilliance, there it is. So a kind word is like a spring day and you would just click this little, air, the little plus sign here and quickly go through and delete the colors that you don't, the, the stops or the sets, the steps, the steps would be the right way to say it. All these steps that we're not going to need. All right, so I would just go through here and delete these. And then you end up with just the word spring. And it's just a really pretty writing of the word spring. And remember, we want something that is four by two or just under four by two or right about four by two, um, not larger. So that is really cute. And if you click on it, it'll tell you it is three and seven sixteenths by one and three quarters. Perfect, how fun is that? But look at, you could add to it. So if you click on this 
uh, create letters and then type in showers hit return move it down out of the way a little bit and then look through your fonts so um, I haven't loaded all my fonts yet I really need to do that but I've loaded a few so I have this piece by piece in a half inch and I thought it was pretty cute I'm going to change the color on it just because um, I liked oh wait how did I do that let me see here click on here there we go. All right. So I clicked on the whole word and then I'm clicking on the color and you know me, I'm going to want some pink and white quilt. So I was thinking it would be really cute to just pick a color. This is Filtech Flamingo and that's not necessarily the color I'm going to use, but I didn't want it the same green so that it will show up better. So then I would just use that little um, side button here to move it to resize it to make it a little bit smaller and maybe just a tiny bit more so this is the nice thing about Embrilliance one of the nice things about Embrilliance Essentials is wording is so easy you can manipulate it change it you could make this have like a little arch to it if you wanted I really like it like this so let's just go ahead and um, click on the whole thing and we are 3 7 16 by 1 and 3 quarters still because it's within that space here so that would fit really well and personally I really like that idea I like the rainbow too um, I like whatever you're going to put in it you could put in your name and date and that would be really cool too because um, keep in mind that these quilts are very likely going to be handed down generations and so having your name on it I think is really important um, and will be appreciated and enjoyed for a long time to come. So I'm going to add that spring showers quilt on the back, not the quilt, sorry, the label on the back. But for that one little border block, I wanted something in it. And I'm not sure if I'll keep that teal fabric because it's kind of busy. I might. Probably will. And then you could just use thread colors that will stand out for that. So anyway, so you have options. And that's all I wanted to bring to you is that on the next two blocks, um, you've got some fun options. If you don't like the flowers wording, it was super easy to change. If you wanted to add a rainbow to your, oh, let me show you that, by the way. So um, you could go to merge stitch file. And then let's see, there's my rainbow. I just bought this yesterday and double click on that and it comes in. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. All right, and so it measures three and 15 sixteenths by one and 15 sixteenths. So it's the perfect size for that block, amazingly. So that is a really fun option. Um, any kind of wording would be a fun option. And like I said, making some changes to the no rain, no flowers block if you choose. So that's where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and get stitching.
And just a reminder, I am using Embrilliance Essentials embroidery software. It's so much easier to use than I thought, and we're all really enjoying learning it. If you haven't purchased it yet, if you would go to my affiliate link, it's underneath all of my videos, or you just type in embrilliance.com slash jam affiliates slash Kristen creates. And then once you're there, it doesn't tell you that it's on anything for me, but it does. It puts a little cookie on there to tell you or to tell them that you were directed by me to go to Embrilliance and it gives me a little benefit. So you would just find essentials. It's right here on the left or you can go to store up at the top. I think on the mobile phone, it's easiest on the store button. I'm not sure. Um, but you want to go to the Embrilliance Essentials and it is right here. You just click add to cart and that helps support me and my family a little bit and helps with the tutorial. So again, that's Embrilliance Essentials if you haven't already purchased it and you're interested in embroidery software.
All right, once you have your no rain, no flowers block done, the last block for this row is actually a filler block, a border block. And I had originally thought it would be really cute to put our name and date in using our Embrilliance Essential software or whatever software you have, or even using your machine, you can do it. Um, I thought it would be really cute to use that one little block to add our name and date. And then Kimberbell came out with a really cute label block. So if you haven't purchased that label block, I think it's in the vault. It's probably actually in the digital downloads. So I would recommend that. It was really cute and it goes along with this quilt. So then I think I'll probably just do the border block as a regular block. You could add something in there if you want. It is a um, horizontal block. So you have to keep that in mind if you decide on a design. Maybe a cute rainbow. <laughs> that might be really cute. There are some people talking, and myself included, thinking that a rainbow would re be really cute on this block. So maybe that's a good opportunity to add in a rainbow. Um, or your name and date if you choose, or leave it just as is. So on that one, let's just talk about that one super quick. So on the filler block, you just have one simple fabric. It is the teal, I call it the lattice, but it, it has the same as the orange peel quilting design. So um, that one, we are gonna start with it at four and a half by two and a half. I cut mine a little bit bigger. I did mine five by three because like I said, I was thinking about adding a design onto it. And so you want it a little bit bigger to start with if, if you choose, but it's supposed to be four and a half by two and a half. It's a filler block. And I did back it with fusible stabilizer and then you want a piece of batting and for the batting, let's see, what did I have? Probably four by two, oh, five by three, sorry. Um, so we'll use a quilting design that is four by two. That means that we want a piece of batting that is five by three for your batting. And then um, for the quilting design, um, we're going to use Geometric 3. Geometric 3, it is that cute one that looks like a beehive. And in 2x4, all right? And then, like I said, you can add a design to that. You can leave it as is. It's the only border block on this entire quilt, so it's totally up to you. And then the last thing would be our... Um, what was this called? A log cabin block. And we made this earlier. And I want to point out that um, the second log cabin block of this, the girly colors is what I called it, um, was supposed to be turned a different way than the first one. And I didn't catch that. And I went ahead and monogrammed mine. So mine is staying like this. But if when you're putting it all together, I think it's supposed to be like that if you want to follow the actual cover guide. So if you follow the cover guide, you're, when you put your blocks together, it's supposed to be this way. Mine is going to be this way because I've already monogrammed it. So that's totally up to you. And so make sure and grab your other log cabin block if you made all three together like I did. All right, and then we'll start putting those together and then we'll have to work on that grass.
All right, so we are going to start with the flowers. 